We've traveled with a Starlink over the last couple years, and we often set it up at camp. It's been a useful tool to let us plan for the days ahead, download maps on Onyx Off-Road, check in with friends and family, and work remotely. But when we're done, we often put it away to enjoy the place where we're at and the company of the people we're with. And not all roads that we travel on are awesome dirt roads and adventure tracks. They're often county roads, or even more often than that, they're highways and they're interstates. There's hundreds or thousands of miles often between the destinations we want to visit, where we want to camp and adventure and play. Those many miles on the highways and interstates are a great time to get work done, with one of us driving and one of us working remotely. But we've always had to rely on cell coverage, and we've wondered if using the Starlink Mini in motion would be better than just cell coverage alone. And so after a recent trip to Maryland and Pennsylvania to visit family and enjoy fall, we decided to stick the Starlink Mini on the roof of our rig and try it in motion over our three-day return trip to Colorado. We had questions that we wanted to answer that I'm sure you have too. Is it reliable? Does it work well? Is there enough bandwidth? How much bandwidth do we actually use? And how much power do we use too? Is it good enough for remote work? Is it good enough beyond emails and Slack to use it for live video meetings and Zoom calls? And we were curious what kind of obstructions might get in the way of a strong, reliable connection. Things like trees and overpasses, and things we might not even know about. So we hit the road to learn and find out, and we're going to share what we learned with you. At Bantha Overland, we're on a mission to inspire and enable more people to get outside and experience the fulfillment of overland-based travel. Join us as we share our adventures and tips for finding awesome routes and dispersed camping, make our own DIY gear, and try to find our balance of mixing work and play as we try to spend more of our time traveling, exploring, and connecting. We found the Starlink Mini to be very reliable on multi-lane highways and interstates. With multiple lanes keeping obstructions well away from the truck and the Starlink Mini, it was easy to maintain a consistent, reliable connection that was good for all types of work. The only issue we encountered in this situation was the occasional overpass, which would produce a quick blip in the connection. For synchronous work like Zoom meetings, this may sound like a quarter second of a robotic voice, or just a little glitch. But really, it's pretty usable, and it's much better than a cell connection that drops for minutes or even longer before you can find cell coverage again. Single lane roads were a bit of a different story. With things such as trees and rocks closer to the road, it was more likely to interfere with the Starlink Mini, causing a partial obstruction that could result in anything from the little blip we saw going under an overpass to a drop of a few seconds to even half a minute or a minute if there were really dense trees. Now, of course, this depends where you are and what's around you, but it's certainly a concern. And if it's just email or Slack or even a casual meeting with a coworker where a drop is okay, you probably can get away with it. But if it's a really important meeting, like with a customer or something like that, you might want to consider stopping and parking until your meeting is over if you're going to encounter variable conditions off of a highway or an interstate. We found another common obstruction at gas stations. Most gas stations have covered service plazas, which completely block the view of the sky and result in a dropped connection. So plan for a loss of connectivity or find one of those old school gas stations that have gas pumps and no covering. Now you might think campsites would be one of the places where mounting your Starlink Mini on the roof would shine, but unfortunately it's the place where we found the most obstructions. The area where you're allowed to park in most campgrounds is predefined, and often that's an area that's next to or covered by trees or next to other obstructions. And when we disperse camp, we often like to park under trees or by rocks for a little bit of shade and protection from the wind. It almost seems like a rule of the road that the place where we want to camp and the place where the Starlink needs to be to have a clear, unobstructed view of the sky are not the same place. They're often 10, 20, 30, 50, or 100 feet apart, and so we found ourselves removing the Starlink Mini from the roof of our rigged camp and mounting it on a small travel tripod with our DIY 3D printed 
Starlink tripod adapter. It's the reason we designed the tripod adapter for ourselves, and we've shared it with so many people. It's because often to get that best view of the sky, you got to get a little bit away from where you're camped, and we find it it's an easy way to get it off the ground so it doesn't get tripped over, and we can also easily reposition it to get that best reliable connection. Now, a couple other stats you might be interested in. We found that the Starlink Mini drew about 25 watts, which was more than enough to be covered by our solar panels. And while it goes up and down a little, that's pretty much where it stayed when it had a connection and we were using it. We also found that there was lots of bandwidth similar to what we would experience at camp with 161 megabits per second up and 22 down in this example, which is more than usable for one or two people working and taking a Zoom call, checking email, or responding to things on Slack. We also started this trip having used about three gigs of data in our billing period, and we ended the trip having used 17. So that's about 15 gigs for the trip, or an average of about five gigs per day. We each had an iPhone connected and Val used her laptop for about four to six hours a day. So I'd say on the days when we just had our iPhones, we were probably averaging three or four gigs. And when we were using the iPhones with the laptop, it was probably closer to six, seven, or eight. It really depends on what you're doing with your devices. I will say that when a device is connected to Wi-Fi, it probably assumes it has tons of bandwidth and does things like backups, background tasks, and there are settings in iPhones where you can limit this data usage. So what did we think of that bandwidth usage? Well, let's double it and say we use 10 gigs a day. Let's say we were watching more YouTube videos, doing large file transfers, posting a YouTube video from camp. If that was 10 gigs a day, it would take five days to get to the 50 gigs that we pay for for 50 gigs a month, and after that, it would cost a dollar per gig. Now, currently, the Starlink Roam Unlimited plan is $165 a month, which means if you're using less than 165 gigs per month, you're probably better on the Roam 50 gig plan paying for the additional per gig. However, if you're going to use it for more than 165 gigs per month, you might be better off with the Unlimited plan. So if you're a part-time traveler and you only use it one or two times a month for a few days at a time, you may be able to get away with the 50 gig plan. Similarly, if you're conservative with it and just don't use a ton of bandwidth, you may be able to use it as well. But if you're a full-time traveler, I imagine you probably would need the Starlink Roam Unlimited plan for 165 a month. All right, so what did we learn traveling with our Starlink Mini in motion? and will we be using it in motion on future trips? I think we learned that on multi-lane highways and interstates, it works pretty well, aside from those momentary blips when you go under an overpass. For narrower roads, which are often found when driving on dirt or just being in cool places, I think it would be a little bit more of a mixed bag. Maybe by using the Wi-Fi assist feature to combine it with your cell phone connection, it would still be a plus, but I think we need to take more trips in these kind of conditions to find out. Definitely for those long hauls between destinations that are hundreds or thousands of miles, it's probably something that we'll be using. I will have to say, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it on the roof. We've been in lots of situations where there's low hanging obstacles, tree branches, and other things scraping the side of our rig and the roof. And I imagine the Starlink Mini might get damaged up there. So I'll probably be playing around with different opportunities to mount it in the window, on the hood, just places where it's easier to disconnect because I still foresee needing to put it on a tripod to get the best view of the sky at camp. So while we learned a bit, and we're optimistic about using it as a tool in motion, it's not perfect. Anything that causes you to not have a full wide view of the sky is certainly the kryptonite of Starlink. So I think in some situations it's really gonna shine and in others it might not. It really just depends where you travel and where you adventure. I hope you found that helpful. We're looking forward to continuing to learn about our Starlink Mini as we travel with it on future adventures. If you're interested in following along on that journey, as we share what we learn, hit the subscribe button. And if you found this video helpful, hit the like button so other folks like you can find useful content like this. And we certainly encourage you to get a DIY Starlink tripod adapter. We certainly love ours, and it's an essential piece of gear that we love having with us when we travel. Thanks for following along. And until next time, I'm Adam from Bantha Overland. 
I hope to see you out there soon on the trail.